I'm, uh, I'm married. I've, uh, I've got a kid. I'm uh, married to the mother of the kid. Double Geordie points. <laughs> I don't want to... I don't want to come across as a dictator here, as a, you know, as a boring fart, but I laid down the rules in the house and I had a beautiful, oh my God, I had a blissful, gorgeous, utopic, no going to the toilet in front of each other rule. <laughs> it was incredible. Don't groan like I'm a dreamer, right? <laughs> if you're shitting in front of each other, might as well live in a zoo, mate. <laughs> might as well live in a zoo. If you are doing twosies in front of each other, go home, dig two holes in the garden, lie in them, wait to die. It is over! <laughs> Finished. But I held on. I held on to the no twosies rule for so long. So long. And then my son, my 19-month-old son, ruined it one night in one foul swoop. This is what happened, right? Me and Rosie had finished bath and robin, right? Rosie took him in a towel, took him out, out of the bath, took him next door to the bathroom, into the living room. I said, I'm going to the toilet. Be a couple of minutes. Don't come in. That's the code, she knows the code. So I sat down on the toilet, I started doing what a gentleman does when he sits down on the toilet. I can hear them in the next room. Robin, come get your nappy on, Robin. Come here, son. Robin, get your nappy. Robin, don't, no, Robin, don't you, no, no, no. That's all I heard, through the wall. So all kinds going on up here. I'm sitting there panicking like a little shit in me, a cat. I'm like. <laughs> what, what happened? What happened? She went, oh God. He's pooed without his nappy on. We've got cream carpets in that room, guys. I'm livid. Right? I'm livid. I'm going, right, uh, get the stain remover from under the sink. Get the sponge and start blotting. She went, no, it's not on the carpet. It's worse. How is it worse? Half that room's tile, half that room's carpet. Tile's better. Tile's better. Of course it is. Has he hit the remote? Oh, for... <laughs> oh I'm going to scrape it from in between the buttons. I'm going to... Every time I watch the telly, this is a nightmare. I went, what do you mean? How's it worse when it just is? I went, how? Tell us, darling. I'm freaking out. What's the matter? She went, I caught it. Whoa! Whoa! I mean, I'm impressed, but whoa! Kind of Mr. Miyagi shit you got going on there. I went, why? She went, I don't know. I went, what are you going to do with it? She went, I don't know. I went, throw it in the bin. You can't do that, of course, that's ridiculous. She went, no, I've just changed the bin, it'll stink it out. Of course, I panicked even more. I went, throw it out the window. Like, I know you all think we do that up north, but we don't. We don't, we've got flushing toilets and everything now. It's brilliant, right? It's the future. I'm panicking there, but what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? And then by the time we're having this conversation, she's now at the bathroom door. Can we come in? No, you bloody can't come in. <laughs> you know the rules, you shall not lay eyes upon me when stoozying. <laughs> she opened the door anyway, of course she didn't. She came in and for a moment, for a moment, I wasn't even bothered. Do you know why? Because he ran in, that little lad. He knew something incredible had happened in that house. He literally came in like that. His <laughs> face said, Dad, you should have seen it. <laughs> She followed in the polar opposite of moods. <laughs> and I'm literally sitting there going, don't you look at me! <laughs> That's it. Bumph! She lays eyes on us. That's it. She has now seen me doing twosies. That's it. Rock bottom of marital life, in my opinion. That is the rock bottom of domestic marital life. I thought it was. I thought that was rock bottom. I found genuine rock bottom a couple of seconds later as my wife stood there in front of me on the toilet holding our child's feces in her hand and said the words I will never forget. Lean forward. <laughs> I want to tell you a quick fact about me. I was genuinely recently arrested for a hate crime. Basically, a racist man had gone into a hotel and been racist at the staff. That's what racists do. I checked into the same hotel six hours later and presumably they heard my accent and thought, he's a Geordie, so therefore a racist. <laughs> he must be the same racist. He must be our racist. And they called the police and I got arrested that night. And for the police, it must have been a pretty confusing arrest, right? Because for the first few minutes, I was genuinely convinced it was Ant and Deck. <laughs> <laughs> but when I realised that those fake beards weren't coming off, I started to shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was all of the papers. It's not a lie, it was everywhere, right? The only thing they didn't get, they got everything, they got cuffs on, they got arm oh, back, the only thing they didn't get was a mug shot, right? Which was good, to be fair, because I was in my underpants and crying, so <laughs> this would have been the mug shot. <laughs> that would have been the mugshot. 
<laughs> unflattering lie. Some people take a great mug shot. Look at this guy. Ooh. Remember him? So dreamy. So dreamy. <laughs> no one's ever said that since Greece. <laughs> so dreamy. This is Jeremy Meeks, right? Whose mugshot went viral ages ago when he was arrested. He was the original hot convict. Why can't I be him? Why can't I be that? He landed, this is genuine, he landed a modelling contract from prison. <laughs> from prison, which is ironically the last place you want to be singled out for being pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I went online and I genuinely found out that there are loads of these so-called hot convicts, right? So, right. we are going to play Shag, Marry, Incarcerate. <laughs> right. This is my very own police lineup, and I will tell you how to play the game. We've got three very naughty people who've done very naughty things. <laughs> but as you can see, they're not bad to look at. They're pretty easy on the eye, let's be honest. Right? Under the masks, they're hideous, but the pictures <laughs> mm. are bloody beautiful. Right? All you've got to do, you've got to decide which you would shag, marry, or incarcerate. So, well, just, what do you reckon? If I can immediately say I'd quite like to have sex with this guy. <laughs> 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 just purely based on the eyes. Uh, see, yeah. Do you know no. what I mean, though? Those I mean... eyes are dreaming. <laughs> Give him the shag. Right, straight away, boom. Didn't even look at the other two, because I was so captivated <laughs> straight away. So if you're captivated, why don't you marry the guy? Well, yeah, because you want because a long... Do you just want a one-night thing, or do you want a long-lasting relationship to look can at I his be, eyes forever? Can I be totally honest? Yeah, always. If I'm going to marry someone, ideally there'll be a lady. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but has this guy got a teardrop, or is that a mole? That, right, that's a good point. I don't know whether that... I mean, Jeremy Meeks had the Jeremy teardrop. Jeremy Meeks has got the teardrop. The yeah. teardrop, doesn't that yeah. mean you've murdered someone in prison? Yeah. Maybe not marriage material. I love that he's nodding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you know, you've got to stand up for yourself, man. Call the biggest guy in the cafeteria out. <laughs> Shave that mofo. I... <laughs> you do quite badly in prison, I think, Chris. terrible. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I would literally walk into prison like this. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Where's the gym? God, they look heavy. Hey, you're big. <laughs> You've dropped your soap. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like she's a primary school teacher, so maybe she's actually really freaking evil. Can I just say, she is not a primary school teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe she's the evil one. You want to incarcerate this little thing? Yeah, I'm yeah. freaking like fraud. Some really good Defrauding frauding. some young children. Yeah. Out of their dinner money. <laughs> dinner money, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. it is. <laughs> I well, I don't want that on the streets, really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really mind. I've got what I want. <laughs> so, you, you choose the last two. Right, OK. I'm going to say, marry beautiful freckle man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, open it. Lovely. They've got the handcuffs on. They and, are dangerous um, criminals. Incarcerate this crazy bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. OK. Sorry, I'm just... Uh... <laughs> Making my move over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can reveal the man that you were going to shag was arrested on six felony counts of probation violation on the original charge of burglary. So you can shag him, but make sure it's not at your house. <laughs> <laughs> Felon B, you are going to marry Felon B. Felon B is. I'm nervous about this, actually. Possession of marijuana and DUI. Oh, oh that's nothing. That's forgivable. It's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, not that bad right at all. Good yes. job, guy. And. Felon C, this girl from Finsburg, Maryland, is smiling in her mugshot after she reportedly beat her husband with one of his golf clubs after finding him in bed with another woman. Thank God I didn't marry her. <laughs> <laughs> that is good, yeah. Wow. And I think, Rick, I think you've won that, so you get to pick any of the felons to take home tonight, and we know, God damn, we know who dreamy you're Dreamy eyes, please. Damn right, dreamy eyes. Yeah. That was Shag Mary Incarcerated. Thank you. <laughs> Can't stay mad at your kids, it's ridiculous. They've got you, haven't they? They've got you right in here. It's amazing, like, the only thing I want, the only thing I want now, as a dad, like, the only thing I want in my life, I just want, I just want Robin to think I'm brilliant. Like, I just want my son to think I'm great, like, I want to be, yes, mate! <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I want him, I want him to think I'm brilliant, I want, I, I want to be his hero, I want to be his best mate. You know, like, my dad, my dad was brilliant. He was my hero. He was my best mate. He's not dead, I've just got better mates now. <laughs> 6,000 just went, oh, shit, no, no. <laughs> Can't be dealing with that. It's a Saturday night, Ramsey. I just spotted these flaws, you know? It's weird. A weird thing happens when you have kids, man. 
to with you and your parents, the relationship between you and your parents. Because when you're down here, you're the kid and they're up here, they're the parent, but you have kids, right? And you are elevated to their level. You're a parent as well, right? And they're just people, <laughs> yeah? And you can see behind the curtain, yeah? You spot their flaws, you spot their inadequacies, inadequacies, I cannot speak. <laughs> you spot their flaws and inadequacies, you spot their faults, you know? It's just this weird, really weird out-of-body experience when you see them with your kid. And you just look at them and go, sorry, how long have you two been a couple of useless bellends? How long has this... <laughs> how long has this been happening? Are you fucking... Is this how you act with a kid? Are you insane? Is this why I have to fill arenas with people that listen to us to get self-gratification? <laughs> I should be Joffrey from Game of Thrones. I should be murdering people if this is how you raise a child. <laughs> like Robin, right? Like, he's 18 months, but he's got, you know, he's got boundaries. He's got... You know, he's got rules, he knows when he eats, he knows when he goes to bed, he knows where he can and can't go in the house, he knows what he can and can't do. He goes to my mum and dad's house for a couple of hours and comes back a dick. <laughs> like, a full-on dickhead. <laughs> See nothing like it, just all of our good work undone, just broken. He walks back in our house, he kicks the door and he's like, all right, fuckers, listen. <laughs> listen, right here, mum and dad, listen good. I think you're fine, I've been to the promised land. <laughs> yeah? I've seen how shit should be operating. I <laughs> think you find what you're running here is a fascist regime. <laughs> New rules. Rule number one. I point at something, you fucking get it. <laughs> you get it and bring it to me instantly. Yeah? Rule number two. When I'm kicking off, when I'm giving it large, when I'm having a bit of a tantrum, you can no longer pick me up under the arms and lift me up. Not a chance. You put your hands in my armpits to lift me up. You know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? This. <laughs> and if I hurt myself on that fall, that shit's on you, yeah? <laughs> First time you did it, I can't, honestly. It's like, where the fuck are you learn that? Come here, son. <laughs> trying to pick up a buttered seal. It was... <laughs> not that I've got any frame of reference for that, like... <laughs> you got a bit of time off, off the tour, Chris, what are you gonna do? Just put our seals and move them around. <laughs> move them from place to place. See how easy or hard that may be. <laughs> Honestly, like, he doesn't like... He doesn't like the, the, the rigmarole of having his nappy put on. He does not like having his nappy put on. When you put him on his back to change his nappy, he kicks off, he gives it large. Right? It's since when you're a dad, right? When you're a parent, you urge that baby, well, up until they're about four months when they roll over, you're urging them to roll over. When they roll over, you celebrate. No, no, no. That's when the fun ends. <laughs> That's when the fucking work starts. Until four months, you can put that baby anywhere in the house on their back, and they have to stay there. It's amazing. You put them down and they go, well, I live here now. You do live there now. <laughs> you specifically live right on that tile. Because I am the god of movement in this house. <laughs> he doesn't like it, but you, you know, he's 18 months. You pin him down and you put his nappy on and it's done, right? I'm not bragging about it, I'd definitely take him in a fight. Easy. <laughs> At least for a couple more months, right? Because he's a big lad. <laughs> and mum won't have it. No, no, oh, no, he gets upset. Why, why does he, no, he doesn't like, no, no, I won't, I won't, no, I won't, no. Well, don't put his nappy on, no, your dad just runs around after him with a gravy boat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll run this through the dishwasher before tea time, don't worry. <laughs> I'm getting the gills on the way home then, fuck that, I'm not having it here. <laughs> the rest of the country will go, what? Gills, massive. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, mum is here. Has he had any dinner at your house today? Did, did he eat his dinner? No. <laughs> no, he, no, he wouldn't. It was weird. No. Tell you what he does like, though. Red Bull ice lollies. Loves them. <laughs> Make them myself, dip them in coffee. He's had six. <laughs> Look how fast he's running. Of course he is. <laughs> he's doing backflips, a poor lad. <laughs> did, he have a, did he have a nap this afternoon, ma'am? Did he have a nap at your house? No. No, I don't. Oh, he did have a quick seven hours. <laughs> but he must, have, he must have needed it. He must have, I'm sure he'll go back to bed for you and his official bedtime in ten minutes. Excellent! It's back to square one, in it? It's back to square one. 
How did he, how did he sleep last night at your house, ma'am? Did he sleep all the way through? No. No, he, um, he woke up. He woke up at two in the morning, crying. And I thought, I thought, is he teething? Or does he want a full Sunday dinner? <laughs> So I knocked him up a full Sunday dinner, did you? Why in the name of God would you possibly do that? Because me and Rosie have got to get him out of that routine, and I'll be honest with you, I think he's going to cling on to that one. Who wouldn't, eh? The midnight roast, why not? Who doesn't want to live like Henry the fucking eighth?